As a family we join hands together Lifting praises to the Father above For sending His Son
this is another blessed Sabbath day. Let us rejoice and be glad on it and praise the Lord with all our hearts, with all our minds, and with all our strength. Well, I don't have to remind you that tomorrow is February 14. And February 14 is a very special love day for husbands and wives and, and for young lovers. I remember when I was in college, I used to give a handmade Valentine card to the then Miss Dinah Liwanag. Whether she would return the favor or not, out of my heart, I just want to give her something, a handmade card, only because I love her. Now many couples, husbands and wives, could also say the same, but there is a special someone who gave not only something, but his life to save people from their sins and for them, for us to have salvation and eternal life. Praise be to God. In the name of our God and Savior Jesus Christ, I want to welcome you to another virtual worship service here at San Diego Philam Seventh-day Adventist Church. I hope you will, you will um, continue to sense and feel the presence of God here in our worship. I have some announcements. The first one, those of you who are needing a vaccine, you may call Gemma Banaak or Dinah Kimen. They would be able to help you get vaccinated, I believe. My wife and I had just had ours at PV last Wednesday. We feel okay thus far. And, uh, and then our church is getting more organized under COVID-19 situation. Praise the Lord for that. The children's ministries and the Sabbath school, the Reconnect, the youth and the ministries, other ministries, all those leaders of those different ministries are working very hard to provide a program that you would be able to engage in. We don't want to just stand by. We want to be to act now, to participate, to be active. And uh, most of these activities are still virtual. Another announcement, we have a beautiful family series every Friday evening for our Vespers. Make this a regular dedicated time for each of us and for your family. This is about preparing our families uh, for the last days. On Wednesdays, we have Bible study and prayer time. And don't forget to tune in. This is a wonderful time to study the Word of God and to pray together. Also, we still have books available for you to give away to your friends and neighbors. And while this world is moving fast towards its, its final days and its end, may we continue to serve and continue to love and continue to share the good news. That's our mission. I want to thank our church family for your faithfulness in loving and in serving the Lord. Our speaker today is Pastor Jerry Pasikatan. He will be introduced to us by Pastor Lemuel Lewana. Thank you very much, Pastor Jerry, for blessing our church family and our friends with God's special message for the hour. I know God has message for us today through you. Also, thank you, all participants, for your willingness to serve the Lord any time you are asked to serve. And may the blessing of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon us as we worship Him in spirit and in truth this Holy Sabbath day. Lord God Almighty, none is as mighty as you. In all things you are faithful, O Lord. In you rule over the powerful sea. You calm its angry waves, heaven shores, the earth also. You made the world and everything in it. How powerful you are. How great is your strength. Your kingdom is founded on righteousness and justice. Love and faithfulness are shown in all you do. How happy are the people who worship you with songs, who live in the light of your kindness. Open the eyes of my heart I want to 
Hello kids! Have you ever heard of the COVID? It's all over the country and even the whole world. But as you can see, I'm ready. But what are some of the ways that you can protect yourself from COVID? That's correct. Wash your hands frequently. Use hand sanitizer. Yes, get the COVID shot. And most importantly, stay away from people who are sick. Well, this COVID virus is pretty sneaky. You can see it, but it's there. And it's ready to infect you as soon as you let your guard down. And sin is pretty sneaky too. Just like the COVID virus, you can see it, but it's there. And it's ready to infect us if we let our guard down. Let me read to you what God said to Cain in Genesis 4-7. He said, If you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at the door. It desires to have you, but you must master it. So sin is just waiting to pounce on us. And just as we have to protect ourselves from COVID, we need to protect ourselves from sin too. And there are a number of ways to do that. For instance, we can use the tools from our Christian toolbox. Prayer. Bible study. Meditation. And fasting. And it's important to stay connected to the body of Christ, the church. In other words, we should stay in contact to other Christian people who will help us encourage to do what is right and not sin. So remember, we should protect ourselves from COVID, but more importantly, we should protect ourselves from sin. So let's pray about that. Heavenly Father, we pray that you keep us safe and well. Please protect us from COVID and other illnesses. And please protect us from sin. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our offering today is for Adventist Television Ministry and Evangelism. Media consumption is at an all-time high. People watch television on their big screens, on their living room, on computers in their office, and on laptops, tablets, and smartphone in their hands. Americans spend a staggering amount of time watching TV programs. We even have a new word for it called binge watching. People get most of their information by looking at the screen. Thus, it's a great way to reach them with the Adventist message. During the World War II, television was pretty new invention. By 1950, only about 5 million TV sets existed. Adventists thought it might be a good idea to use a new medium. So, a program called Fate for Today was launched. It has the distinction of being the first national broadcast religious program on TV. Soon another, soon another Adventist television program followed. It is written in 1956, Breath of Life in 1974, and more recently, the Jesus 101 Biblical Institute. Today, this continued to be the four television ministry owned and operated by North American Division. Pro they provide a primary evangelistic trust. Adventist television has been transforming lives for 70 years and still going strong. Every year, thousands continue to discover a Christ-centered message of hope through the creative production of Fate for Today, Breath of Life, It is Written, and Jesus 101. More people are reached through TV programming than any other way. You can help Adventist Television Ministries touch hearts and change lives. Please give liberally today. Let us pray. Most gracious God, Heavenly Father, 
Thank you for the privilege of partnering with you and each other in the work of ministry. We know that you will bless our contributions for proclaiming or proclamation of the gospel. As we give our tithes and offering today, O oh God, affirm us with your love, grace, and provision for each, each giver in our midst. Thank you for their heart of the ministry. Let them continue to give with a cheerfulness and full of trust that you will never fail them in their time of needs. This is all we ask in your wonderful name, Jesus. Amen. Let's pray. O oh God, our loving, merciful Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. This beautiful hour of the Sabbath day, we humbly come to the throne of grace to worship for in thee, O oh Lord. We put our trust and offer our heartfelt gratitude. So thank you for all the wonderful things you have done for us. Our health, our life, and peace of mind that only you can provide. Thank you, Father God, for you have given yourself to die on the cross of Calvary on our behalf that we may have eternal life. Help us to surrender ourselves daily and be truly faithful to you. In a special way, we pray for your people, the church, Please be very near to us and protect us from harms and sicknesses. May your holy angels cover us with your protecting love. We pray for our worship today. Bless your sons and daughters who will be hearing the word of life that will be shared to us by your servant, Pastor Jerry Pasikatan. May you speak to him the message that you want us to hear learn and meditate more of you and that we will and that you will help us walk with you and the holy spirit may abide with us we remember some of our brethren who have lost their loved ones please be very near to them and comfort them with your love father god we yearn for your son return Help us to be vigilant, preparing for that blessed morning when you will usher your very elect to that kingdom prepared for all the redeemed. May the grace of our God Almighty be with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. He's 
worth everything that I might sacrifice. Oh, I want Jesus more than anything. Take the fame that I might want and all the things that seem so dear. I'd rather have him than any praise that men may give to me. I want him to have control and be the breath of life in me. I'd rather have Jesus, I'd rather have him than Without end, from the heaven, He rules the universe. Countless angels waiting on His every call. But one day, I saw Him all alone on the road to death. And untold agony Just for me He suffered What a price He paid Take the Fame that I might want And all the things that seems so dear I'd rather have him than any praise that men may give to me I want him to have control and be the breath of life in I'd rather have Jesus, I'd rather have Him than anything. As I go on through life with Him, there can be no Our speaker today is Pastor Jerry Pasikatan, who is currently serving as Stewardship Ministries and Worship Director, NCD and Church Planting Coach, and Asian Pacific Ministries Coordinator for Ontario Conference of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Ontario, Canada. I'm glad to let you know that Jerry is married to my cousin Sigrid Mora Rumbawa, in fact, it was my privilege to officiate their lovely wedding more than a decade ago. Jerry and Sigrid are proud parents of two boys, Lyle, 15 years old, and Lee, 10 years old. Following his life motto, and I quote, to love the Lord our God with all my heart, with all my mind, and with all my strength, Pastor Jerry pursued God's call and leading on his life for over 26 years in the ministry so far, having served in two division territories, NAD and SSD, with some missionary work stints in North Asian Pacific Division. Pastor Jerry is a product of both secular and Christian education. 
He has degrees in engineering, history, theology, philosophy, MAs in Christian education and theological studies, and a doctorate degree in ministry, major in missions. He served in various ministries and capacities as youth pastor, lead pastor, university assistant professor, hospital and campus chaplain, school administrator, and church planting pastor or missionary evangelist. He pastored in Canada since 2004 as youth pastor for Toronto Korean SDA Church, Bramali SDA Church, and lead pastor for First Filipino Canadian SDA Church and Faith Filipino SDA Church in downtown Toronto. Of the many and various ministry work he had the opportunity to initiate and participated in, I am personally excited with his commitment to promote practicing the presence of Jesus, redemptive stewardship, multi-generational and contextualized worship, whole life generosity, financial discipleship, and stewardship as a disciple's way of life. And yet, his first love in ministry, I believe, is to lift Jesus up in his preaching, teaching, and journey in life. Let us breathe a prayer as Pastor Jerry Pasikatan breaks the bread of life and as we attentive, attentively listen together. Good morning and happy Sabbath. Our scripture reading today will be found in Ephesians 3 verses 14 through 21. For this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might through his Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height, to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Good morning and happy Sabbath, brothers and sisters in the Lord. I praise the Lord for this opportunity that he had given me to be able to join your worship gathering today. I thank your good pastor and your current leadership team for extending the invitation for me, not only to worship with uh, each one of you, but to uh, be able to share uh, God's word. Let us bow our heads for prayer. Father, uh, please open our eyes, our minds, and our hearts and allow us to see Jesus again. Bless our humble study of your word. May it draw us closer to Jesus. Come, O Holy Spirit, be our guide and our teacher. In Jesus' name, amen. What do you think is the greatest need in these last days? We believe we're in the last days. We're in the end times. What do you think is the greatest need of every Adventist family? In answering that question, I wanted to propose that Ephesians chapter 3 verses 14 to 21 particularly verse 17 will provide us the answer what do you think is the greatest need in the last days of every family here in Ephesians 3 14 to 21 uh, we have the prayer of apostle Paul to the leaders and members of Ephesians church when he wrote the uh, letter to the Ephesian church, he was in prison. Uh, he could have prayed that God would <clears throat> take him out of that mess, but that's not what he prayed for. But he thought about God, the goodness of God, how this God adopted him, how this good God forgave him and uh, assured him of his salvation. And then he thought of the leaders and members of the Ephesian church. And his prayer was that in verse 17, 
more than anything else, this is the prayer of Paul for them, that Christ may dwell in their hearts by faith. I thought of that for a while. I said, why would, why would Apostle Paul, more than anything else, wish and pray for that specific matter to the leaders and members of Ephesian Church? That's what we would want to expound this very moment. I leave the rest of the verses there uh, uh, for your, for your uh, deeper uh, study, but we wanted to dive into verse 17. To guide you in your deeper study eventually and reflection for the rest of the Sabbath day or probably some other time, here are the key points in Ephesians 3, 14 to 21. You'll find in this set of verses, these points, that there is a God who is worthy of worship. This God is the Father of Jesus, and by God's grace, His grace, He is also our Father. I hope you like that. This Father, God, has a family both in heaven and on earth, and... Uh, this God takes pleasure in passing out his riches, riches of his glory to his earthly family where you and I belong or are members of. He is working through his Holy Spirit to strengthen his children with his power. Now, more than anything else, the, the, the line in white, this is what we wanted to highlight. This good and loving and powerful father has one earnest desire. And what is that? that his son, Jesus Christ, shall find a dwelling place in our hearts. What do you call this? Uh, what Apostle Paul is writing in verse 17 of chapter 3 is called in many ways in the Adventist church. Uh, I'm sure this is nothing new to you. Uh, some of you might probably call this, oh, that's abiding in Christ. You're right. But for the sake of our humble study, many ways to call it, let's call it PPC. Practicing the presence of Christ. This is what I propose is the greatest need of every family in these last days. To practice the presence of Jesus. To have the presence of Jesus day by day, moment by moment. And this is what Apostle Paul wanted, wanted the leaders and members of the Ephesian Church to have and to experience. What will happen if we practice the presence of Jesus? Well, first and foremost, if you check the scriptures and the writings of Ellen G. White, it would tell you that this is where we're going to get the assurance of salvation. But there's more. It will lead to a, a, a never-ending, unlimited set of blessings that God wanted his people to experience in these last days. I'll show you that. But let's talk about 1 John 5, 11 to 12. You know this passage, right? It says, he who had the Son had life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. It's as simple as that, all right? Sometimes, you know, we preachers make things complicated. But the gospel of Jesus was so plain and simple, yet it's so profound and so deep. Uh, what John was saying here is, he who had an ongoing connection. He who had an ongoing relationship. He was thinking of relationship here with the Son. The Son of God had eternal life. And the reverse is true. He who does not have it, does not have an ongoing relationship with the Son, does not have life. And so you can actually say the people, he or she, who is practicing the presence of Jesus Christ is assured of eternal life. That's the beauty of what Apostle Paul is praying for the leaders and members of Ephesian Church. Now you check on Ellen White. These are some selected uh, portions of her writings. Uh, she will tell you this. Those who practice the presence of Jesus, what happens to those people? Jesus becomes their righteousness and their power. Oh, beautiful. Mount of Blessing, page 8, it says the righteousness of God is embodied in Christ. And those who receive Christ receive righteousness. So many people are led to believe that they are righteous than others. Oh, but uh, there's only one righteous. There's only one perfect being in the whole universe, and that is Jesus. If you practice his presence, you have his presence, Jesus will become your righteousness, your salvation, and he will become your perfection. I think that would free us from all kinds of <clears throat> uh, 
uh, not necessarily unnecessary things in these last days, right? And would assure us of our salvation. And those who practice the presence of Jesus is like living day by day in the very presence of God. And the same God is strengthening them, giving them power to do his will. Who doesn't like that? Those who practice the presence of Jesus will actually uh, have Jesus uh, becoming their ultimate protector and sure defense. Look at this quotation, Ellen White, Desire of Ages, page 324. She wrote, the only defense against evil, meaning there's nothing else, only is what? The indwelling of Christ. And then she wrote some beautiful parts here. Uh, Unless we become vitally connected with God, uh, continuing with our relationship, practicing his presence, what happens? We can never resist the unhallowed effects of self-love, self-indulgence, temptation to sin. We may live up many bad habits for the time. We may part company with Satan, but without a vital connection with God, which would happen if we practice the presence of Jesus. Through the surrender of ourselves to him moment by moment, we shall be overcome. Without a personal acquaintance with Christ and a continual communion, we are at the mercy of the enemy and shall do his bidding in the end. Kind of scary, right? But the beautiful part is what we wanted to focus on. Practicing the presence of Jesus will allow us to have Jesus as our ultimate protector and sure defense. I love that. What about you? Oh, this is another one. Those who would practice the presence of Jesus, what happens to them? Jesus would live in them and reproduce his character. When Jesus comes into our lives and we allow him to come into our lives, he knows what he's going to do. You know what he's going to do? He will transform us. He will uh, conform us to his image. He will reproduce his character, his life in you and in me. Look at Christ's object lesson, page 69. I thought, it's the preaching of the gospel to all the nations of the world. With uh, That thing alone would usher in the kingdom of heaven and lead to the coming of Jesus. But Ellen White is adding something more. Christ is waiting with longing desire, she wrote. For what? For the manifestation of himself in the church. Hmm. When the character of Christ shall be perfectly reproduced in his people, then he will come to claim them as his own. Oh. And so this thing will never happen, you know, the character of Christ uh, perfectly reproduced in his people. It will never happen without the people of God practicing the presence of Jesus. All right. And then Ellen White leave a challenge there, I believe, Review and Herald, March 9, 1905. Like, don't settle for less. She wrote, let us try with all the power, not in our power, not in our strength, but through the power that God had given us to be among the 144,000. Keep practicing the presence of Jesus. Leave the result to God, whether you'll be uh, part of the 144,000 or not. I think the more you practice the presence of Jesus, mm -hmm, the more uh, chances that you'll, we'll leave it to God. All right? I'll leave it like that. Uh, Practicing the presence of Jesus will, will allow Jesus to finish the two works that he wanted to accomplish. One, he wanted to finish the work in you and in me. Now, what work is that? Transforming us to his likeness, changing us, developing Christ-like character, becoming more like him. And then while that thing is going on, uh, the same uh, Jesus, Lord and Savior of ours, will use us in the finishing of the gospel work. I hope you're getting the point. Uh, this Arab Ages, page 42, says God could have reached his object in saving sinners without our aid. But in order to develop our character like Christ, so that's the reason why we're engaged in ministry. It's to give God glory. It's to develop our character so that we'll become more and more like Jesus. Is your ministry and uh, responsibilities in the church uh, leading you to be more like Jesus? Then you're on the right track if the answer is yes. Because the strongest argument in favor of the gospel is is and will still be and will always be a loving and lovable Christian. That thing will never happen without practicing the presence of Jesus. If we would humble ourselves, be kind, courteous, tender-hearted, pitiful, there would be 100 conversions to the truth where now there is one. Oh, those things will never happen if we don't practice the presence of Jesus. Be kind, be courteous. It comes as a result of practicing the presence of Jesus. And so, brothers and sisters, this PPC is a beautiful message. I am saying again, 
This is the greatest need in the last days of every family. Can you imagine if all fathers and mothers, children, sons and daughters will practice the presence of Jesus? Oh, I'm sure there are children and young people listening and watching right now. Look at this set of questions from the two slides I am showing now. Okay, this would further deepen our reflection. What would happen if I would really practice the presence of Jesus? Well, you're in for the greatest adventure of your Christian life. <laughs> because every moment, every day, if you practice the presence of Jesus, will uh, allow you to experience the very presence of Jesus, the very life of Jesus uh, in your life. It's just like asking yourself these questions. And it would settle a lot of issues and questions as you go through these questions here. What does Jesus see when he looks through your eyes? All right? What does Jesus hear as he listens through our ears? So outside it's us, but inside it's Jesus by faith. And uh, it would settle, you know, what kind of things we read, what kind of things we listen to, what kind of activities we engage. Uh, other questions there, whose voice is being heard? Whose heart is beating? It should no longer be mine. It should be the heart of Jesus. What is Christ made to do through our hands? The hands of Jesus are missionary hands. If you practice his presence, you allow his hands to work through your hands. Oh, your hands will be blessing a lot of people. Where is Jesus made to go on our feet? Can he really go there? The feet of Jesus are missionary feet. <laughs> if you practice his presence his feet will take your feet in doing missionary work and all kinds of wonderful and beautiful things what is jesus made to eat and drink oh that would settle the food we eat or whatever it is right where now there is so much debate and some people are even led to think that because they're eating this and they're doing this they are more or less advanced than the others now practice the presence of jesus and allow your relationship with Jesus dictate and tell you and convict you what to do, what to say, what to eat, what to wear. In the end, if Jesus really dwells in us, we are practicing his presence, who is really has the ultimate control of our lives. Our marriages, our parenting, our plans, our daily activities. I hope and pray you are seeing the point. This is beautiful brothers and sisters, practicing the presence of Jesus. That lead me to uh, ask a follow-up question. What will be the ultimate result? I'm sure it's all beautiful. We can see it's all beautiful, but what will be the ultimate result of practicing the presence? We are taking it now higher and deeper. What would happen if all Adventist Christians around the world would practice the presence of Jesus? What would be the ultimate result? Of course, we're going back to what we've been sharing a while ago. We would all become more and more like Jesus each day. And that's what God wants. But there's more. It will simplify soul winning, as you'll see, and evangelism in the last days. Today, the, least, the recent survey I checked, we're spending around 10,500 US dollars to be able to lead at just one soul to Jesus Christ. That's a lot of money. All right? But the day is coming when it's not going to be the case. You'll see. Let's look at some of the verses here and even quotations of LNG. Luke 640, for example. This verse talks about the uh, teaching of the Bible about discipleship. What is the goal of discipleship in the Bible? To be like Jesus. Jesus said himself, a disciple is not above his teacher. Everyone who is fully trained will be like his teacher. That thing will happen if God's people will practice the presence of Jesus. Without, no, it will not happen. Romans 8, 29. What is the, the very desire of God? Oh, Apostle Paul wrote about it. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined. To be what? To be conformed to the image of his son. To be like Jesus again. To be conformed to his image. This is ultimately the will of God for his people. And it will happen if God's people will practice the presence of Jesus. Look at this. 1 John 3, 2 says, When Jesus would come, when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. What John was saying is this, little by little every day, Jesus is changing us as we abide in him or practice his presence. And one day we will be like him. Oh, there's more. Practicing the presence of Jesus. Did you hear that? Actually, by doing it, you can hasten the coming of Jesus. Yes. What's the other word for that? You can expedite the coming of Jesus. How? 
by living a holy life, by living a godly life, which again will only be made possible by those who would practice the presence of Jesus. And look at that, the one in yellow. And hastening the coming of the day of God. So you see, ah, this is a beautiful teaching in the Bible. I would say perhaps the most important teaching in the Bible. And then there's prophecy. There is this prophecy in the Old Testament, which I'm excited to happen one day soon. Zechariah 8, 20 to 23. You know what will happen? The ones in yellow, I want you to focus. The, the, the rest of the wordings there, I leave it to you. Many people, it says, from every land and leaders from powerful nations. These are not ordinary people in the standard of, of earth, right? These are famous people, powerful people. What would they do? They will come to worship the Lord and pray for his blessing. Why? What would happen? In those days, for everyone who lives in Judah, 10 foreigners will come, grasp a Jew's arm and say, we want to have a part in your destiny. Here we go. Because we have heard that God is with you. Did you see that? Perhaps this is what the world is waiting. What is the world waiting for? That the presence of God will really be seen in God's people. And, and what would happen is that, as Zechariah wrote, if the presence of God will be proven is really with God's people, these leaders from powerful nations, these people from all walks of life will be the ones coming in. They would run to us. They would uh, knock on the doors of our churches. They would come to us and tell us, we want to join your rank. We want to have a part in your destiny. Why? Because we have proven, we have heard, we have seen that the presence of God is with you. Check it out. This is what this prophecy is saying. All because of the practice of the presence of Jesus. Ellen White wants to add this. Uh, Review and Herald, February 25, 1902. Okay. She wrote, Then a multitude not of their faith, seeing that God is with his people. That talks about the presence of Jesus, the presence of God with his people. What would happen? They will unite with them in serving the Redeemer. The same like what Zechariah is foretelling. All right? If we practice the presence of Jesus, it will simplify the finishing of God's work. The people around us will be the ones coming in and they would say, oh, now we know you are God's people because his presence is with you. I want to join you. We want to be one with you. That's what will happen in these last days. And so practicing the presence of Jesus, brothers and sisters, it's like going back to the basics. It's like going back to Jesus. Why? Ellen White would like to add this. She says, Christ-like life is the most powerful argument that can be advanced in favor of Christianity. Men or people will believe not what the minister preaches, not what Pastor Jerry preaches, but what the church leaves. Oh, the world is waiting. The world is waiting uh, to see and to prove and to finally be convinced and persuade that the presence of God is really with his people, those individuals who are professing to be followers of Jesus. Christ-like life, Christ-likeness, this is what the world is waiting, and it will only be possible if all of God's people now will start practicing and keep practicing the presence of Jesus. That's what the world is waiting. Can you imagine again, if all families, all members of each family, all Adventist Christians, all fathers and mothers will be practicing the presence of Jesus. All our young people, all our children will be practicing the presence of Jesus. Every pastor like me will be practicing the presence of Jesus. All elders, all officers of the church. And all we do is encourage each other with this one one deliberate thing that God wants us to focus on, practice the presence of Jesus. Can you imagine what will happen? Jesus Christ may and will come anytime. That's our belief. You know what happens when Jesus comes? If he comes today and you're practicing the presence of Jesus, you know what will happen, right? You will be so confident and assured of your salvation. You will be confident and happy to meet him face to face. That's the beauty of practicing the presence of Jesus. I hope and pray 
that this will be your experience, especially all the members of each of the families in this amazing congregation of yours. Thank you for having me. God bless you all and happy Sabbath once again. Worship is worth more than weary. Worship with of weariness. Praise God for an amazing worship today. Thank you to all the participants who never say no when asked. To the technical team support, the audiovisual team headed by Roy Mayor, thank you for making this possible. God meet us in worship and He expects us to lead others to worship as well. So my dear brothers and sisters, don't forget to follow our Facebook page, share our videos, so others may give the same chance to worship with us next time. May the Lord continue to shield us from this pandemic and receive the bountiful blessings from above. A blessed Sabbath day to one and all.